over school bus safety and whether enough is being done to keep your kids safe. Now new at 10, 41 Action News reporter Dia Wall is digging deeper into that debate. Dia. Yeah, good evening, guys. In 2005, then-Governor Matt Blunt created the Missouri School Bus Safety Task Force. They looked at the merits of seat belts on board school buses back then, but no law has changed in the 11 years since. It only took one crash, though, for Pembroke Hill to make sure its students are buckled in. Pembroke Hill parents watched the news in horror. Oh, I know you feel terrible again. In Tennessee, a bus driver crashed into a tree, killing at least five students. It's horrible to hear. I mean, no one would want their kids to be in an accident, you know, let alone on the school bus. Three years ago, more than 20 kids were hurt when a bus full of Pembroke Hill sixth graders rolled over on I-70 after the driver passed out from a medical condition. James Thompson has a case against Durham School Services for the crash, taking issue with the qualifying, training, and monitoring of bus drivers. There are too many that fall through the cracks in terms of qualifications or safety issues, uh, health issues sometimes uh, with bus drivers uh, that put, put the safety of our children at risk. Pembroke Hill immediately added seat belts to its buses. You know, they had a, a lot of input from the community and they, they responded well. Back in 2005, the Missouri governor launched a task force to look at school bus safety. According to its report, the value of safety belts in buses could not be studied. Not enough buses had them. But it also said seat belt systems are, quote, effective in reducing ejection and rollover crashes like what happened in Tennessee. Would these children have been saved if there would have been a requirement for seat belts, particularly lap and shoulder belts? The investigation is ongoing. Tonight, Pembroke Hill parents are saddened by the accident to our east and thankful for the changes made here. I feel for every parent and you, know, you want to see those improvements made everywhere. The federal government recommends lap and shoulder belts for smaller school buses and any new school buses that are bought moving forward. But they leave it up to the states to decide. In Kansas and Missouri, there's no mandate for them to do so. Live in Kansas City, Dia Wall, 41 Action News.